So let's start today with a clickbait article that was released right after the announcement of the game when we know nothing about it because they sure know 15 reasons why Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon will be terrible. However, they know nothing about it, so let's just write an article here because we love the game, which is funny because that's the like exact reason in this article of why it says it's being written because of my love, why this is being written. That that doesn't really sound like a coherent sentence anyway, but any, but we'll go get into this and see if it's really love or if it's just the clickbait, because we'll see if they can actually bring something to the table that actually sounds like it might actually be verifiable. So let's get into it with number 15, running on Sun and Moon's engine. As a game franchise grows, each installment should have improvements over the last one. Yes, generally, but usually that doesn't mean upgrading the engine as soon as the last one is done when we have no advancements in the technology that's using it. But hey, let's see what else they got. The first of these is a graphical upgrade. Look at most big franchises, you'll see how the graphics have gotten better over time. Yes, but when you have not a, when you don't have a new system to put it on, they tend to not get that much better. A little bit of refinement, but not that much better. If you're going to sit here and be like, hey, let, let's, let's look at the Halo franchise over here and see the difference between Halo 1 and Halo 2 and Halo 3 and Halo 4 and how much better it got. There's also differences in the systems that they were being played on and refinements being done over time to make it better. As it was, but when you've got a game that is on the same system as its predecessor, the refinement isn't as noticeable. Considering these are going to be running on the 3DS, not the Switch, it's still the same technology, even though the system itself has released like 15 different versions of it that are slightly better than the last, you, you kind of have to think about that. The hardware just isn't there to give it a giant jump. And advancement besides the graphics that are sitting there right now are pretty damn nice considering what we had way back when on stadium one and two <clears throat> and the graphics were giving us 3d pokemon models they were uh nowhere near as refined so let's jump into what number 14 is it's still on the 3ds yeah i i just said that didn't i <clears throat> and and talking about 15. But anyway, that's one of the reasons, because it's on the 3DS. What were you expecting it to be on? That's the only other handheld they have. If you want to try and count the Switch as a handheld, which is cool that you can take it with you, but it's not a true blue handheld like the 3DS that was designed specifically to take with you on the go. But we're going to nitpick on the fact that it's on the 3DS, because Nintendo hasn't made a Nintendo 3DS XL advanced hybrid 4K something another model, apparently. But hey, well, let's go and see what they say about that real quick. When the Nintendo Switch was announced, many people felt that it was the perfect console to release a main game in the Pokemon series. No, I don't think anybody really felt that that was the perfect console to release a main game in the series. Yes, you can take it with you, but uh, right now the Switch is, um, what do you say, in short demand? It's hard to get a hold of. Not everybody's got it. You've got scalpers out there. It hasn't had the time to get it in everybody's hands. There's nowhere near the amount of Switches out there as there is the 3DS. Everybody and their grandmother has a 3DS. Heck, my father has a 3DS. True story. He, he really does. He's got a DS, strangely enough. But anyway, <laughs> but uh, let's let's see this. Game Freak held off for so long because they wanted players to be able to take the experience with them on the go. Now the Switch is a thing. It would be entirely possible to have gorgeous graphics yet keep the classic experience alive. But for some reason Game Freak did decided to make Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon on the 3DS. This console is already going out of style ever since the Switch launched. So it's perplexing that such a big franchise would still be coming out on it. Many people are ready for Pokemon on the Switch, but Game Freak seems to be refusing. Like like I said, how many Switches are out there compared to the 3DS? 
I should have looked that number up before I started this, but I didn't. So you can Google it yourself. It's not hard. Just open up Google and type how many switches have been sold and then type how many 3DSs have been sold and figure out what the difference is because um, it's going to be a huge difference in the fact that there's like a ton more Nintendo 3DS is out there versus the Switch, because the Switch is still brand new, still hard to get a hold of, just like any system that they create. They never make enough, because there's too many consumers out there, which I'm surprised they haven't figured that one out in recent years. Because every time they do do that, they always seem to have a console, console shortage of the same year or so that it comes out, especially going into the holidays and everything. But, uh, there, there's that. So, yes, Game Freak decided to make it for the 3DS because they can sell a heck of a lot more than there are Switches. I mean, if I think about it, what was it? Um, Black and White 2 sold, what, 8.8 .8 million copies globally? I don't remember if that's just up to this point or if that's... And the first year or whatnot versus when Black and White 2, or Black and White came out, that was Black and White 2, they sold around 15 million globally versus, say, Pearl and Diamond that sold 18, where Platinum itself sold about 7 mil. So that kind of lies right in the range of where the current trend usually is when these games are being sold and how long they go on for so long, and how much are actually sold over time, is about the same, is probably what they're going to expect out of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, is close to about 7 to 8 million, maybe 9 million, sold globally. But guess what, you can't get that if you're just releasing it on the Switch right now, because there's not that many D or Switches out there, there's more 3DSs out there which is probably why they decided to release it for the 3DS versus the Switch. Even though the Switch can go on the go, its battery life isn't that big, nowhere near close to what the 3DS is capable of handling, considering it's designed to actually go on the go. Although it is nice to take the Switch with you, and it would be cool to have a game on the Switch, but the chances of you and everybody else having a Switch are slim compared to if you and everybody else had a 3DS, Chances of that are more likely. That's why they've got it on the 3DS, not the Switch. As for reason 14, I'm sorry, reason 13, no new Pokemon. And this one is a little bit tricky to even think about. What do you mean by no new Pokemon? Because if you saw the trailer, you know there's at least two new Pokemon. Depending on whether or not you consider Forms a new Pokemon or not. But, let's go ahead and see what they got to say. There are several problems with Game Freak releasing enhanced versions of their main games. One of them is, there's no new Pokemon. Instead, I guarantee that Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon will rely on bringing in old Pokemon, or other Pokemon from past generations to justify creating a new adventure entirely. What they forget is that we have already met these characters and are familiar. Uh, yeah... See, that's the thing. We have this thing known as Pokemon Bank. We can bring over any of our past Pokemon over to the new games anytime using that, especially with the virtual console. Gold and silver hitting it. Uh, red, blue, and yellow hitting it. <clears throat> and you can uh, bring those older Pokemon over. And of course, you can always do the trade up through the time and all that good stuff too, which uh, you know some of mine have been done. And have come with me from earlier versions up to this current one. And all thanks to the Pokemon Bank that makes it even easier to do. But uh, I don't think that's what is going to justify making a new game. However, <clears throat> if you want to lie in the camp of new forms or technically new Pokemon. Then there are no po new Pokemon. At least two. Because you got the legendaries that seem to be fusing together. And why do I say new forms consider as new Pokemon? Well, let's take a couple. You got Rotom. <clears throat> Rotom has multiple forms, but one Pokedex entry. 
Now, depending on which form you're facing depends on how you tackle it, but essentially he's got similar things based on all the forms with the signature move that is difference between them, between Heat Rotom, Freeze Rotom, um, uh, Mo Rotom, all the other Rotoms, Fan Rotom, Wash Rotom, but they all share the same Pokedex entry. So on one side, they're the same Pokemon, aren't they? But on the other hand, they're also entirely new Pokemon because they are form changes, which come with type changes and a difference in um, <clears throat> some attacks that they use. Therefore, on one hand, they're new Pokemon, but they're also the same Pokedex entry. And then you can take something like Eevee. Yes, I'm comparing Rotom and Eevee. Now you got Eevee, who evolves into multiple different types. Each type has a different Pokedex entry. However, just like Rotom, they have about the same base stats that are changed depending on which type it is, which then of course also changes the kind of attacks and uh, abilities that the Pokemon has as well. The change is more diverse than say Rotom, where only he gets Hydro Pump if he's Rotom Wash, but then he can come over here and use Overheat and um, other things, if he's, um, the Fire Rotom, and Blizzard, if he's Frost Rotom, and so forth, um, but at the same time, you got different Eevee evolutions, they're all different numbers in the Pokedex, with similar stat spreads, there, or the spreads are different, but similar stat total, with different, um, moves, depending on the type that they've evolved into. Yet they're also considered different Pokemon instead of, say, you know, a form change of Eevee. We could have just had Eevee evolve into a normal type and then had changed his forms from there based on what we wanted out of him. It would be a similar concept as Rotom, and then again, maybe that would have happened if they had thought about it before Rotom came along. But instead of doing the Eevee route like they did when they thought up of Rotom, they were like, well, let's just give him something to change his forms. Kind of like, you know, you got that and Deoxys. They do the same thing. And you can just touch an object and it changes their form instead of evolving Rotom a particular way. Otherwise, I'm sure Rotom would probably evolve in similar fashions to Eevee to make itself different types, but this way they could relegate one Pokedex number for Rotom, yet also give him multiple forms and abilities in order to go with those forms. So, really, when it comes to no new Pokemon, there are new Pokemon, because I'm in the camp of new forms are considered new Pokemon, because those new forms are going to come with type changes. They may come with ability changes. They may come with... Uh, Attack changes. Uh, they're going to come with stat changes, that's for sure. So it's definitely not going to be using the same Pokemon. It's not going to be like if you put Sogalio up against Sogalio New Form together, there's going to be a difference in stats and other things. So they may share the same Pokedex entry, but at the same time, they're not the same Pokemon. For instance, Aloha Pokemon. The Aloha variant of Pokemon also do similar things, where you've got Muk and Alola Muk. Well, Alola Muk is poison dark, while Muk is just poison. Regular Muk is super effective. Uh, hits against uh, him are, you know, can be done by Psychic type. He's going to get hit by a super effective hit. Well, guess what? Alola Muk doesn't have that weakness anymore. It's immune to it because of its dark typing. You've got nine tails. Nine tails a Lola form. One's fire, one is ice. Different attacks, different abilities, different stuff, same Pokedex entry. Yeah, it could be just considered a comp out because you're taking what's already existing and giving it new stuff, but at the same time it breathes in new life to that because instead of sitting there going, you know, I would I love nine tails. Would really love to use it, but Nine Tails is a fire type, also brings drought with it, which isn't going to bode too well with, say, my ice type play, uh, playing style because I prefer hell and other things. Or, you know, water types, and I like Lapras, but I can't really u justify using Lapras in the sunny day that Nine Tails is going to bring. Well, guess what? You got an ice Nine Tails now that, that allows you to bring it instead. That doesn't mess up your strategy or maybe enhances it. So that one, 
It's totally up to you, depending on whether or not you want to sit there and justify there are no new Pokemon based on just forms. But, uh, to me, there are new Pokemon. There's at least two. So I'm going to go ahead and go on the assumption that, A, you never watched the trailer, or B, you just consider, uh, unless it's got a new Pokedex number next to it, it doesn't count as a new Pokemon. Then again, Marshadow hasn't even come out, and that's one has its own Pokedex number. So until it finally comes out, if it come, waits until Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon comes out, there's a... So for number 12, it's an uninteresting story. So let's see what they got to say on that one. Very seldom does Game Freak create interesting stories for the Pokemon series. However, Sun and Moon proved that they still had it in them. Those games presented something interesting that we all could invest in. It was a refreshing change of pace. Unfortunately, tra traveling through the same region again will only make it more difficult for them to create a unique story. Game Freak stated in their announcement that Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon would have a different story than their predecessor, but that doesn't mean that it will be good. The best case scenario we would be in for will continue the Ultra Beast storyline, or use it as a means of creating more Ultra Beasts, or perhaps that's wishful thinking on this point. And to say, or what do I have to say about that? Right. For one, I don't really care for the Ultra Beasts. I could care less about them, honestly. They're really not that great. They're different. They honestly seem like they should be considered just straight-up legendaries. And, you know, forgotten to the point of legendaries. But at the same time, they also have drawbacks. They may have really strong power, but are really slow. Or they're really fast, and then they can't take anything. Like a leaf will knock them over when they're hit. But... As for that, yeah, going through the same area makes it a little bit difficult to make a new story, but if you do change up things, which I talked in a previous video, you know, what if, instead of doing the uh, Aloha challenges and stuff like that and fighting totem Pokemon, what if there were gyms instead? What if the story did change and the bad guys weren't the bad guys? What if we see bad guys from the past show up? go, you know, we're here to you know, steal all your Pokemon. Team Rocket comes back for all I know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Team Plasma shows up. I don't know. Something like that could happen. You, you can still tell a completely different story in the same region. Uh, it's really not that hard. But, you know, other than that, I, I don't got anything else. <laughs> you you can change. You could change the story completely, add new things in, take old things out, and actually add to the region itself. Doesn't necessarily mean that the region's going to be exactly the same. We're talking about an alternate timeline. For all we know, there could be another island out there that doesn't exist in the current timeline, but for whatever reason, it exists in the other timeline, which gives, you know, a completely new thing to go with. Um, you know, you could do badges, like I said, instead of the totems. I'm not a big fan of the whole totem thing. I preferred going with the badges and actually going after the Elite Four than, you know, fighting people I've already fought and with already, in a sense, and trying to rebeat them. At the end, it just didn't seem as interesting to me as if they were completely new people at the top. But, yeah. I mean, they could essentially go on with the Ultra Beasts. Give us more story to that. I think it would be kind of cool to explore their world a little bit. Which is also another thing. You could do that. I mean, heck. Also in Sun and Moon, if I remember correctly, you go into an alternate time anyway, an alternate world, when you go after the uh, pre-evolved form of uh, Sigalio and Lunala. And you go and get Nebby again. You've got to go and uh, go into the other world, essentially, would be like going to Moon's version and run around there and stuff and go catch your other legendary and bring them back. They threw that in there. They can do all sorts of things with it if they really want to, and it doesn't mean it's going to be the exact same ride. For all you know, the world is different. But only time will tell, considering we know nothing about it and only got a few screensh or screenshots, sort of uh, small video clips of what's going to be in there. 
Number 11. Not enough new content. And what do they have to say for this one? If the graphics, 3DS exclusive, exclusivity, <laughs> and November release are any indication, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are playing it very safe. Game Freak doesn't seem to have any interest in building something entirely new at this point, for better or worse. Now, wait a second. They always seem to release in November. Everything's been on the 3DS as of late because it's the only system they have that's a handheld and portable. Besides, you know, again, the Switch is still a console, not a portable console. Oh, okay. It is a portable console. God, the Switch is really changing it up. It really is. Because at one point, you only had consoles, and then you had your handhelds. And your consoles stayed, your handhelds went, and now the Switch can do both. But anyway, the 3DS is still an exclusively take-with-you-on-the-go console. Or, yeah, the 3DS is. not The Switch can do either. Anyway. But yes, so everything's on the 3DS. They usually release in November. So, talking about it playing very safe, that's usually how they normally do it. And the graphics, well... They're still what the 3DS is capable of. But, you know, you can take that one however you want to take it. They continue. The problem with this is that people who look at it aren't going to see anything new. They'll think that it's just the same game with a few new enhancements. There could very well end up being a painful lack of new content. There's no doubt that a lot of the same content from Sun and Moon will make a reappearance, but it has us worried about the new things that be going that they'll be doing. It probably be something along the lines of a slight new battle mechanic and a new mini games. Other than that, it's pr practically the same as before. And um don't know where they pull this one out of. I guess they're pulling it from Black and White versus Black and White 2, which is probably true. I mean, <clears throat> if you're looking for something that's going to be vastly different, it's probably not. I really hope they can get rid of some of the things and bring back some of the stuff that work, like, I don't know, Super Training. That worked so much better than some of the other stuff that they've got in there. Well, that's... <laughs> Only time can tell on that one. Like we said, there is no information on it. So to sit there and pull out this and be like, oh, this isn't going to happen, doesn't mean it won't. It doesn't mean that it will. I mean, a few new enhancements is better than no enhancements at all to begin with. And considering the difference between, say, black and white versus black and white two cells figures, it's probably going to bring over the core audience and only the core audience. Maybe not a whole lot of new players. Then again, it could bring some new players. But, again, we still don't know anything. So, we'll figure this out uh, <laughs> when we get more information. Yeah, so this video is getting kind of long. I'm going to continue this in a second part, so hit subscribe and talk to y'all later. Bye.